Who was the next loser? Derek. <coughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't at all. Uh, any idea what it refers back to? The Falklands War. Very good. Is that all you have to say? <laughs> now, who won that? I think we won on, on the away goals rule, didn't we? <laughs> and there's a mad cow. <laughs> <laughs> What's the <you> game? <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> and goodbye fairly soon. <laughs> Are we sticking to our original agreement that this would be the only television programme I've been in in ten years where I didn't say anything? Or can I say something now? Uh, yes, please, go ahead. I mean, it's an uh, open forum. You know, you know, Thank you. you, you uh, know. <laughs> you, know, you, know you know, Derek and I were at school together. Really? Yeah, we were both at school in Liverpool and I used to have an accent just like him. Can you it's imagine? <laughs> Well, what it's sort of accent is that? <laughs> well, I got me into Oxford. Where did it get you, Derek? Certainly not into Oxford. Ooh. Well, Derek. it's an interesting answer. Um, <laughs> now, from a not very yes. interesting person. <laughs> yeah. yes, we we think the answer to the question well, it kept is... kept him out of jail. <laughs> for the moment, for the moment. <laughs> is this the only programme I'm not going to be allowed to have a word in? <laughs> We yeah. think it's November 1990, yes, and we reckon that the real loser was uh, John Major's dentist, because I can't think of any dentist who would want it to be known to the world at large that he put his patient in bed for four days after having a tooth out. Yeah, that wasn't very convincing, was it? Well, Margaret wasn't convinced by it, I can tell you. There, you heard it first on. Have I got news for you? <laughs> yes. John uh, Major, a bit of a phony. <laughs> No, no, he, he... Pretending he had toothache when he should have been supporting Maggie. First time I've ever liked him. <laughs> One quitter per person, Paul. Stand by to be wowed by the quitometer. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to break into the Nintendo market? <laughs> a new arcade game? <laughs> it's a lovely Cecil, isn't it? Cecil Parkinson. Of course, Cecil Parkinson, a lot of people don't know, was actually a joiner prior to him going to the Parliament. And he was actually going to go back to that when he lost his position in the Cabinet. But he learned a very valuable lesson while he was there, that one loose screw collapsed the Cabinet. <laughs> It's not working. <laughs> I've cut to the song. <laughs> I mean, if you look at Frankenstein and then you look at Ian, you think, of course, well, Ian hasn't done anything about his hair at all. But other than that... Yeah. Are you suggesting, Edwina, that I look like the monster? <laughs> no. okay, will you sue me if I do? <laughs> no, I don't think you do. No, we'll That's leave the suing to you, Bruce... Edwina. You've always been a great sewer. Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> And on Paul's side, a guest whose track record on this programme is such that William Hill's actually quoted odds of three to one that he wouldn't turn up tonight. <laughs> so he's come hot foot from the betting shop, clutching several briefcases. Roy Hattersley. You know when you didn't turn up last time? Where? Here. But I thought you ought to be here before. Yeah, you, ne you never guess what we did. <laughs> <laughs> It was a Did you hear about uh, it? It was a terrible disappointment to me, because I thought they were going to get a great barrel with staves. Well, you're and... here now, anyway. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they end up paying more than they actually earn, these fathers. It's, uh, it's a staggering answer, because it's completely right. Uh, well, don't it... hide your disappointment, <laughs> <is> it? <laughs> I can't, I'm afraid it's, it's genuine. It's a new look you've got, isn't it? <laughs> Are you trying to be jacket or the tie? Oh, is that a tie or a jumper? I can't tell. <laughs> it used to be a jumper, I think. Oh, it used to be a jumper. Mm. And then it became a tie, magically. <laughs> Talking rubbish now. You're wearing rubbish. <laughs> uh, since the CSA was set up, maintenance payments have jumped. Do we have, have to jumped. listen to all this rubbish? <laughs> you haven't answered the question. What's no. all this? turning into a mini-series or something? <laughs> you you mean, uh, payments the movie? <laughs> 
you can sleep through these bits like you and normally do. And what's this stuff about John Major's brainchild? Yeah. That's a contradiction in terms. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the answer. Yes, um, the answer which we've already given you, and you're now yeah. repeating. Since the uh, CSA was set up, maintenance plate... We don't care! <laughs> You're not interested, are you? Has anyone got a couple of spoons on it? <laughs> Could be more entertaining. Um, Where were you? Uh, I was here, right? Where were you? <laughs> the agency has been attacked for failing in its uh, intended aim of tracing runaway cars. This goes on much longer. <laughs> <laughs> this programme will be going out live. <laughs> I'm it's... beginning to realise why I didn't turn up. Right? <laughs> no, I didn't. It was a lot easier with the tub of lard sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't interrupt for once. Saddam's had a go at a member of the royal family, which is our job. <laughs> Bastard. Mm. <laughs> which, uh, insane... You know, it's two years today since, since Maxwell went overboard. You look rather upset by that. I am. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of people think of November the 5th as Guy Fawkes Night, but I think of it as Maxwell Drown Night. <laughs> So if you want to join me in a little celebration later, <laughs> I'll be running my bath. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind if... Uh, <laughs> uh, for added confusion this week, uh, we've decided to throw in a couple of headlines from Wild About Animals magazine, just for the sheer joy of it. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. Queens move in on kittens. There we are. That's from uh, Wild About Animals for you. Uh, <laughs> is it a magazine that you get weekly, Angus, this one, Wild About Animals? Um, not weekly, no, because no, it comes out every fortnight. Does so it? I, right, Still gives yeah. you repetitive strain injury. Right? <laughs> <laughs> depends, uh, depends which animals are in that week. Uh, <laughs> um, do they have, do they have pin-ups? <laughs> like a sort of cheeky little cocker spaniel. <laughs> you can and take me for a walk any day. <laughs> Do you, do you know this? And it might be common knowledge this, so you can cut it out. But you know that Virginia Bottomley is actually an am anagram of I am an evil Tory bigot. <laughs> it is. True. Can we work it, it out? Yeah. Look. It was in the sun earlier this week. Virginia. Oh. Yes. No, no, it's true. We can cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'd I, hate to bring this up, no. Angus. There was a rather amusing piece in the Sunday Mirror oh, yeah. about this bloke's shopping basket. Did you see it? No. I think it was... I've got a copy got of it here, funny enough. It's for you. <laughs> it's next yeah. to the, the, the word uh, basket case. <laughs> and it says here, Angus Deaton's life, Dayton, whatever you pronounce it. <laughs> I've Angus, now. Angus Deaton's, Dayton's life is dominated by orange Dayton. juice. <laughs> Did you know that, is that Angus Deaton is an anagram of neat, young, <laughs> sad... Girls are stripped in police hunt for what? Ten pounds. Lord <laughs> Lucan. Naked girls. Sugar. Ten pounds. Na naked naked girl girls is a lovely answer. Virginia Bottomley. <laughs> it's not true. Hidden cameras. Ten, ten pounds. pounds was the effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me the ten pounds. <laughs> um, unfortunately, no one got it. Missing tenner is the right answer. Uh, no, generally all right, of course. Well, uh, right. Tender height. Ten pounds right. is, of course, the right answer. <laughs> this is how <laughs> Labour lost the last election. <laughs> appearing on crack quiz shows. <laughs> <laughs> this is the supermarket, the Asda supermarket in Barrow. And a woman came home and said they looked in her knickers for this £10 yeah. note. <laughs> Was Angus in the supermarket doing a bit of shopping? <laughs> His, his, life domi <laughs> his life's dominated by orange juice, you know. <laughs> Apparently biscuits are delicious, but dangerous. <laughs> did I say that? I'm afraid you did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> seems, uh, seems an awful <laughs> lot Where did you say that? I'm, I'm just reading now, hang on. I'm okay. reading Mystic Meg at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Next, gloom on what? Recovery. Uh, Gloom on recovery. No. Gloom on mastery. None of these Gloom things. on this side. If we don't get a point in this yeah. round, bloody Merton will win again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I... 
Good. Just tap it. Lovely. <laughs> This is um, it's a good story about a radio football commentator. And he was always burgled when he was on air because the burglars knew precisely where he was at the match. Can Ooh. I just make an announcement? This is a recorded programme for any burglars. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually at home with a bloody great dog. Um, well, I don't know if it is actually about this, but I'd like it to be because it's a good story. Um, about that uh, woman in America who cut off her husband's penis while he was asleep because he hadn't put the shelves up very well or something like that. <laughs> and, um, well, she, sh she should have just used a spirit level. <laughs> And then, actually, what she did was she drove off and threw it out of the window, and then the police had to go and find what, it. Sure. And no, the penis. Oh, I'm sorry. And um, apparently, uh, he's had it sewn back on. And his name was Wayne Bobbitt, and it's now Wayne Bobbitt very gently, or it might fall off. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought they'd found it after it'd been run over by a bus. <laughs> so it's wider, but flatter. <laughs> he well, uses it as a bookmark. <laughs> He actually uses it as a shelf mm. now. <laughs> so I, I suppose if it was confusing, he said, he's out on the road somewhere, I'm fine, they sort of like just accidentally sewed a hedgehog back on. <laughs> That's what actually happened, and he complained after three days because he kept making holes in his underpants. Where did you read this? In <laughs> fantasy land. <laughs> It'd be terrible if, you had, if your sexual organs were a hedgehog, though, because they'd go to sleep every six months. Mm. Yeah, so what's new? <laughs> <laughs> As, you uh, have to give it a sauce for milk every half hour, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Underpants manufacturers would eventually adapt it into the design. Yeah. Well, it'd be awkward, you know, the, you know, if people get in, you know, get terrible fuss about sort of, you know, women breastfeeding in public. I mean, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have something to complain about if we had to take our trousers down in five minutes and put a sauce for milk down there. <laughs> Yes, um, and, and breadcrumbs. Mm. No, it isn't. It's a complete red herring. Um, it is... Uh, I thought we established it was a hedgehog. hedgehog yeah. <laughs> and That'd be terrible if your private part was yeah. a fish. Yeah. You'd, have to, you'd have to keep it in water the whole time. Yeah. They'd never go to sleep. Yeah, you'd have to walk around with a goldfish bowl full of water strapped. <laughs> like that. Yeah. And if you went swimming, somebody might accidentally catch it and you'd be up on a line. <laughs> Yes, uh, God knew what he was doing. <laughs> Just as well it isn't then. Mm. Could have been Again. Could be a giraffe. Mm. Half an hour on a giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> not now, I'm not, no, I'm not time really, do I? The, the 24... Wouldn't mind half an hour on a giraffe, though. <laughs> Very sexy animals, giraffes. You don't need to tell me. Yeah, they can see the police coming, so by the time you sort of get there, you can... Well, <laughs> to go out with a giraffe. <laughs> Just to take it to the pictures and that. Mm. You'd always get some bloke behind complaining he couldn't see the screen. <laughs> it's a giraffe, mate. What do you expect? <laughs> well, you can take his hat off for a start. <laughs> Somebody said to me before I came on tonight, just regard yourself as ballast on this program. <laughs> I'm beginning to understand what they meant. As ballast? I think ballast. You, mis you misheard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think no, I, that's the word you say when you want to guarantee the recording to stop. Yes. <laughs> what? No. Bollocks. <laughs> well, we'll see if it stopped the programme when yes, the exactly. transmission goes out. But so, well done, Paul. Like it's a much better one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, at least we now have an edit point in the programme. Yeah. <laughs> so, as it's an edit point, I can go back and say, well, uh, one point to you then, Paul, and one to Ian for what? taking up. <laughs> Uh, it's the Charles No, Paul. wait, hang on. <laughs> a minute ago you were going to give me two points. He says, you you give him a point. <laughs> Is this some sort of hidden scoring system you've got? <laughs> mm. I have no control over the points they do it upstairs. No. Mm. You seem to have very little control over anything here. You, yeah. Know, yeah. you, you just read the words, you don't know what they yeah. mean, you don't know... <laughs> Point system works. Why isn't Sweep doing this job? <laughs> Sweep can't do it because he's so worried about Angus shagging his girlfriend. Well, I think Paul's wife might have something to say about it.
You left a pair of underpants behind last week. Mm, it was deliberate. Mm. Had uh, spikes all over them. <laughs> I wondered whose saucer of milk that was on the menu, please. <laughs> Is it something to do with? Because it was. I didn't. I, I sort of missed it. But there was some, somebody complained about these these adverts of me going into people's bathrooms and stuff. So is it sort of like some? Uh, from the mutton cigarettes can't be. A lot advertised. of people complain. They said that's terrible. Why are you doing that ad? Well, money. <laughs> <laughs> 85 quid, cash in air. <laughs> quid, that's a sort of new slang for thousand, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's like a sort of guinea. So Paul controversially appeared in a soap ads where he burst in on women having a bath. The ITC said, invasion of female privacy is a difficult topic to address humorously, as Paul, I think, showed in those commercials. <laughs> And uh, Paul will be sulking for the rest of the programme. <laughs> Which uh, obituary column brings this round uh, to the end of its natural life and the tragic situation oh, is... shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> and Lessons like... and classes, virtually mm. the same thing, aren't they? Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not prejudice. <laughs> there is a prejudice. Prejudice yeah. against this side there of the state. No, you've got your point, you've got your point. Uh, right, thank you. He doesn't <laughs> like being... Okay, no, does he? Doesn't thank like you, being Carol. criticised, no. Uh, Ian and Joe, Just your question there like a begins. great big ponce. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'll give you I'm two points for that. <laughs> you give you one. I don't know what it means, I just read it out. <laughs> All right, I like your commercial. <laughs> no, you don't. No, I don't. What in what? Puss in boots. <laughs> Welding industry is going through quite a good time in Paraguay because a lot of people <laughs> in Paraguay have taken up welding. Merton in desperate attempt to win again. And not doing badly. You can have one for getting welding. It is, in fact, adaptive asymmetric <laughs> in bipolar gas tungsten arc welding of aluminium. <laughs> Paul. Gorbimania papadaya tvangliski slova. Can you say it again, please? Probably not, actually, no. Gorbimania papadaya tvangliski slova. I think that's what I said, wasn't it? Paul is pretending he's speaking Russian. Why not? I'm pretending I'm speaking English. Gorby mania is a word which has now been found in English dictionaries. Oh, I am impressed. And who told you that? He did. That's true. Well, I just so I put two and two together. Question in Russian. I'm sitting next to a man who happens to be Russian. Who am I going to ask? <laughs> I'm not going to call Ghostbusters, am I? <laughs> why, why can't they print their R's properly? <laughs> this is the letter which is called Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. 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 It's, not, it's not an R. That's Don't a nice one. Teaching him. Be like <laughs> no, no, I'm just, that's a nice one there. There's a pyramid on top of a table. What's that one? Is that an A? No, that's D. Yeah. Well, that's all we've time for on Open <laughs> University. <laughs> Has it got something to do with um, being married or something? That Goebbels was the only one who was married or something? Although, no, I think Hitler did get married shortly before he stuck a bullet in his head, didn't he? Hell so maybe not that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Hell of a honeymoon, that was. Um, <laughs> the only one who was happily married. Yeah. Well, Goebbels killed both his wife and all his children. Mm, that's what I mean. That's what happens when you're happily married. Yeah. That's mm. what happens when you can't think of what Christmas presents to get. <laughs> Uh, in the news this week, there are concerns that Yasser Arafat's long absence from his wife may be having an adverse effect. <laughs> oh, yes, this is uh, uh, Ian McKellen was uh, appearing in Hamlet, the National Theatre, and he got ill, and he said, I can't go on. And uh, somebody said, uh, oh, my dad's a tube driver. I'll see if I can borrow a train that'll come on instead of you. <laughs> so the train came on, they put a pair of tights on it, and they had an actor in the wings saying the lines, and they synchronised the train doors with the words. <laughs> to be or not to be. Mind the gap. The report said one middle-aged woman dislocated her thumb trying to put on underwear. But it, it failed to mention... 
Oh, that she is. is. <laughs> <laughs> It's army people are meant to stop um, going abroad and um, having sex and getting drunk all day and beating each other up and squaddies are meant to stop um, blue tacking each other's genitals together or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> These initiation ceremonies that the, um, the regiments are so fond of. And um, it's got to stop When you say in blue the tacking their genitals together, <laughs> is that one soldier's genitals to another soldier's genitals? <laughs> or what? It's, um, it entirely depends on the regiment. <laughs> it's very different in the Paris. Oh, I wouldn't like to get it in the Paris. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, the new code of conduct. Uh, I mean, the parade ground would be a mess if their genitals were blue tacky. <laughs> you say about turn, I mean, what's going to happen? <laughs> it's a battle of the fittest. <laughs> um, sorry, where was I? Um, the um, answer's obviously... Camilla. Camilla Parker Bowles. Why? For, for what reason? Um, the odd one out front is She's a statuette, yes. not a mug. The yeah. others are all Toby Jones. That's right. Um, he, uh, what do you mean that? <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, that's like taking over. <laughs> <laughs> um, Percy Edwards used to talk like animals. Mm. It's something to do with talking to animals. Doctor Doolittle talked to animals. Yeah. Percy Edwards was an animal. Um, so, do you want to pick one out? Well, it's well why? Uh, that's the, uh, yeah, why, should, why, can't we, why can't they just all be friends? <laughs> why do we have to isolate people like this? Um, you unfortunately have to pick one of these. Well, we would, the well that's what Martin said, really. It's either going to be Major yeah. or Le Mans, isn't Absolutely. It? So which mm. one would you go for? <laughs> well, that's how you <laughs> land on it, is it? Mr Major, I think. So oh, well, it else. might be Norman Lamont, you It see. could be Norman yeah. Lamont, though, couldn't yeah, it? it could be Norman Lamont is the odd one out. Should listen to Martin. It was actually John Major. Well, yeah, I think you, were, John Major. That was it. I said John Major. He did first. say John Major. I said John Major. Major ages ago. Yes, but you were overruled by your captain, unfortunately. Overruled? Since when have I had the power to overrule anyone? Anyway? <laughs> oh, oh, I overrule you, you then. <laughs> Go on, piss off out. <laughs> Go on, you overrule. <laughs> <clears throat> We could get Noel Edmonds doing this. <laughs> Mella sang on National Music Day, didn't he? So something from Oliver, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll do, do anything for you, toes. just anything. That one. I'll <laughs> do it all together. I'll <laughs> do anything for you. That one. <laughs> all together. <laughs> I'm trying to turn Welcome. the nature of this program into something more entertaining. <laughs> all people want is a sing song. <laughs> they don't want this rubbish. <laughs> I think this is um, to do with bad language in descriptions of people because the three um, right-wingers, Portillo, Lily and Redwood, um, were all described by John Major as bastards. Um, one of the few things he's got right. <laughs> because they were being disloyal and having lunch with Maggie and voting the wrong way on Europe. And uh, John Gumber wasn't one of the bastards, um, but he was described by the Norwegian ambassador as a dritsek, which means a shit bag. <laughs> One of the few things he got right then. Yes, I mean, good old Norway. <laughs> Dis point there. <laughs> so that's it. Gummer, Gummer um, is a shit bag, and the others are bastards. <laughs> <laughs> As usual, a guest publication acts as our loose cannon. This week, the highly esteemed heating and ventilation news. Oh, good. Mm. Central heating system. <laughs> ventilator <laughs> switch. I'll give you the two for, uh, for getting ventilator. Acoustic ventilator is what we really <laughs> want. Is it gas-fired central heating? Uh, Coal-fired. <laughs> Uh, fan fluid, fan fluid boiler <laughs> is what we're after, which uh, an, is a new range of gas fire boilers. So uh, absolutely right. You, <laughs> how do you know so much about? I don't know. I'm doing better on this than the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a subscription. I to think he has. Uh, news. Engineers find what stop the tube train. <laughs> Loose um, wire, wire. Engineers find 20,000 people in tunnels, Dr. <laughs> no. Snow, wrong type of cable. snow. No, I have actually given you the Chewing answer. Gum. It's engineers find what stop the chew.
That's just irritating. Mm. That's, uh, that's why I did it. Watch out for that cabbage, mate. Oh, too late. <laughs> cabbage man dies in fight with Spider-Man. <laughs> On which, um, on which reflective note... Blimey, that's a big cabbage! <laughs> <laughs> these, uh, these are no longer captions, really, are they? No. no. They're just what well, I'm trying to turn say. the programme round. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and thank you. Want you want to cut to the song? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> when it's spring again... <laughs> <laughs> on which uh, trivial note we say thank you what to our What did you artists. sing this last bit? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a little drum beat. Uh, they, uh, I don't think you'd like it. No. Lamont had to employ a well-known libel lawyer, a man called Peter Carter Ruck, a great personal friend of mine, <laughs> whose name rather entertainingly rhymes uh, with luck, of course. Ooh, so lucky old Norman. Uh, so that was a quick plug for your lawyer then, was it? Was I noticed? No, not our lawyer, Angus. I'll take it very slowly. Oh, right. <laughs> a London's lawyer. top libel lawyer. Mm -hmm. That you just happen to know very well. Yes. Mm -hmm. I heard he was a great big punce. <laughs> <laughs> the big lawyer them. will now have brown trousers. There is no doubt about it. <laughs> what was he in Thunderbird? Well, he's obviously Thunderbird 1, isn't he? Look, I mean, he's Scott, isn't he? <laughs> was Scott Thunderbird one? He was, wasn't he? I don't have the answer to that here. I always felt, I always felt sorry for him because he had to go on that sort of movable sofa and lie down like that. Yeah. What I can't understand either is why did Thunderbird 5 circle the earth picking up sort of signals when all they had to do was like put an advert in a local paper, if you're in trouble, phone this number. <laughs> and you don't need a great big spaceship picking up every radio signal in the world. Mm. Well, that's a NASA. We yeah. could save a lot of money on the Hubble, couldn't we? <laughs> Yeah, it is madness, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, I reckon it's a spiral the... dance. Madness oh. for someone else, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, spiral a dive. young person's reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Just you got the name of the band wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> Spinal tap, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> close, close. Anal what? penetration? <laughs> John was, uh... Didn't you use the word back bottom, really? <laughs> um... Paul's been to Longleap. <laughs> <laughs> the Euro lobbies got rather mm. agitated because the American movie industry was going to get better treatment than it does now. The French just got all well, stroppy because yeah. we all want to go and see American films rather than endless, dreary, trop belle, pour moi. <laughs> But it's television as well. I mean, I wonder what Golden Girls and Cheers would come out like in French or Italian. The Le Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need yeah. subtitles with Merton here. Yeah. 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 What would the fact that they don't make any films? Oh, oh yeah. really? The British film industry, Ken Branagh. Oh. <laughs> he makes a lot of films. <clears throat> yes, and they're all great. <laughs> It is, uh... I'm not going to get you into one, <laughs> Angus. <laughs> uh -uh. Determined to try it, yes. What it about the Goldman Sachs Bank? What did they give? A one million pound bonus to every one of their... But that was for success. <laughs> well, I don't know. They were involved with <clears throat> Mr. Maxwell, were they not? Maureen, Allegedly. do you think that's a bit <laughs> nice? <laughs> Sorry. Just because Goldman Sachs Bank have given all their employees dirty, fat Christmas bonuses and the Maxwell pensioners have got bugger all, <laughs> yeah. I don't sorry. think you have to bring up the fact that Goldman Sachs were Maxwell's favourite banker. I'm sorry, I really I don't am think sorry. it's necessary it at Christmas. Crude, it's not nice. Crude and tasteful. It's not it charitable. Was, yeah. Sorry. It was People most always bring him up on this programme. I don't know why. Mm. Dig him up. <laughs> yes, they can't actually so. find his grave. It's in his wife's name. <laughs> Liberal spokesman Matthew Taylor pointed out that ordinary citizens who leave their job don't get a penny. He said the government should do to the country what it does to its own ministers, whereas uh, at the moment what it does to the country is what its ministers do to their secretaries. <laughs> uh, one, uh, one senior minister who benefits... Well, given dictation. <laughs> the last part of yes. what I said and you're yes. almost there. That's rude. Give them dictates is obviously what she meant. Mm. Um, 
I thought you meant give them dick. <laughs> it's Christmas panto already, isn't yeah. it? Now I understand. I do declare the Prince's balls get bigger every year. <laughs> Maureen Lippman is appearing at the mm. Octagon, Reading. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, it seems to me that the Sultan of Brunei has given large amounts of money for a child to have an operation, um, or several operations. Frank Sinatra has done similar charitable things for small children. Mm. Why is this giving you such a guess? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Just... I, I'm just so glad Michael Jackson's not on one of the photographs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Di takes wills to see what? Solicitor, to uh, see oh, if they oh, can oh, be oh, changed. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Mm. Can, can, can we be allowed to answer first? Will you jump in? You don't mean I've noticed your technique of cheating in this round by giving the right answer quickly. We've got to catch you lot up. Uh, it's getting ugly. I feel rather like Yeltsin when the Russian result came in. How the hell did I lose? <laughs> Old uh, Zirinovsky over there surging in. 90! How do you do that then? It always happens though, doesn't it? Last round. What, that mm. someone fixes the score? <laughs> Nothing I've noticed the me. trend. If you tend to get the answers right, you get points. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a complicated system, but you'll get the hang of it. <laughs> it's so, almost like a quiz element, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> so a copy of the uh, Have I Got News For You video for our winners. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <clears throat> a copy of Paul Merton's video uh, for our winners. Um, And of course, free KYTV videos for the whole audience. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, not out on video yet, but we'll let you know. Um, Judging by what Angus mm. is wearing, he thought he was doing come dancing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what you thought you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Seaside special, I think. <laughs> Each team gets a court artist's impression of a celebrity in the dock. The question is, who on earth is it, and what were they doing there? Uh, Paul and Bob, here's your mystery man. <laughs> <laughs> George Carman. George Carman QC it could be, or um, <laughs> Michael Winterton QC. He's yes, quite popular it was, there. It was, it was actually the other person that we were more like Michael Winner. interested in. Is it Matthew Kelly? Does that really look like Matthew Kelly? <laughs> yes, it does. Actually. Henry <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> George Michael. Is the right answer. Oh, and the other guy's Andy Ridgely. Hmm. Andy Ridgely? <laughs> Why do they both have little clouds around there? Are these flies <laughs> around their heads? They've got these strange sort of... <laughs> They've just been pushed through the wall. Oh, yeah. He doesn't want to record for them anymore because he feels that they're not promoting his mm. records because he refuses to be a sex object anymore. Mm. Right. Which is of He doesn't want to be sexy, which in George's case is pretty hard not to be, I've got to tell you. you know. mm. He's... <laughs> Could be anyone, couldn't it, really? Mm. Yes. Is that Princess Diana? Is that George Michael without his Ooh. beard? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, free? is it Claire Latimer? Oh, Merton, deliberately oh. going for the unfunny point winner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's even more irritating, getting it as well. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Well, I don't mind. Um, what was she doing in. Uh... He's going to shag him. Yeah. <laughs> He is. Yeah, that's a point. Yeah. Right, it's Judy and Clary. <laughs> you, that panda wanted that jacket. <laughs> Walks well, into the just court. Levi's are more valuable than hard currency. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Walks right, into the, yeah. Even the panda and the other pandas <laughs> and the other pandas say, where'd you get that? Oh, just something I picked up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's really me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is the story of uh, Pan Pan. Um, Twelve four. <laughs> that's the score, Ian. You're losing. Twelve four. Uh, eight Twelve points four. behind. Mm. And we haven't even come to the final round, which Paul always wins, we know. <laughs> and that bikini was... Um, that was that a Christmas song. It's a yellow, it's 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 yellow dot, yeah. by the man who looks a bit like you. Um, Jimmy Somerville. <laughs> no. No, he dances like you.
Can uh, I go now? Not yet. No. <laughs> not yet. We've just got another half hour. Twenty-three ten. One. Paul just said that's probably the highest score. I think it's the biggest win in margin. I think. Yeah. Possibly. I should point out that my advisors um, said to me, "Look, the key to this program is clearly wearing a shirt that makes you look like an idiot." <laughs> um, so I tried it, and I. And still you look like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs>